Good morning, everyone. Y'all need a haircut. <laughs> I hear so many people go, I can't wait till the barber opens. I can't wait till the hairdresser opens. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> well, I'm in good shape, so that's why I thought I'd throw that out there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Matt and I were good, right? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We come before your word with an expectation to hear, to receive of you. I ask you now to help me to minister your word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. That I would teach and preach not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the power and in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, I've come to church today. To receive spiritual understanding. To receive spiritual understanding. Truth, from my life. Truth from my life. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Teach, me teach me what I need to know. Need to know. Cause, me to Cause me to hear what I need to hear. Need to hear. In, any In any area of my life where I've been confused, where I've been, confused. Where I've been, where I've been ignorant, where I've been, ignorant. Where I've been, misled. Where I've been misled, give me, give me spiritual understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to say some things starting out here that most people in this church would probably agree with. Maybe not everyone, but most people probably. Um, those of you watching online, um, if you're part of this church, you'll probably agree with some of the things that I'm going to say. Um, but not everybody probably will. Um, but I believe it's important I really do believe this is very important that these things are said. This is not my subject of what I'm teaching on today. Um, it's not the topic of what the Lord has directed me to minister on. But it's something that I believe needs to be established in the heart and in the life of every believer. And that is that God wants you healed. Amen. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is part of the curse. Jesus came to bring healing. He took upon himself the stripes. And those stripes, <clears throat> by those stripes, we are healed. Amen. And the reason I, I say this is because if you look at the life of Jesus, he went about cities and villages healing all that were sick. And if sickness... isn't identified as part of the curse, then the result is tolerance. And the result also will be where a believer does not exercise and use their faith and believe God for God's very best, which is the will of God for all to be healed. Now, again, you don't have to agree with me on it. I, I, I'm not saying you have to, of course. I'm just... I'm going to put it out there. This is what I believe. I believe this is consistent with the scriptures and consistent with the word of God. And uh, this isn't to shame anyone or discourage anyone. It's actually to bring hope and truth according to the word uh, where healing is concerned. Because exercising your faith, believing God where healing is concerned is very important for your life. And even if you don't have one bit of symptom of sickness at all, that's fine. You can still exercise your faith concerning healing, that your body is healed, that you maintain healing and wholeness and soundness in your body. Amen? And um, if you have symptoms of sickness, if you have diagnosis of sickness, um, this is just to encourage you to stand on and to believe God's word concerning your healing. Amen? Um, I'm teaching this, what I am teaching on is a series entitled Simple Faith. And what I'm going to talk about today concerning faith is the stability that faith brings to a person's life. Basically, faith stability. One of the points that I made two weeks ago was that I, I 
use the example of faith being similar to like a switch and leaving the faith switch on, okay? You know, if you think about it, I, I was thinking about it between services. Um, if you think about a switch and how, how convenient we've made turning things on, right? I mean... You don't even have to walk over and plug stuff in for the most part. You know, concerning lights or something like that, you can simply go over and, 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 and by code, we put them in very convenient places to just flip it on, <laughs> right? And to even leave it on, it's convenient. You just leave it on, <laughs> right? And I want to encourage you with your faith. Just stay in faith. Through all what we're dealing with in the world, just stay in faith. Just leave it on. Just stay in faith. And when you're tempted to look at the circumstances, just go, ah, I'm just going to leave it on. I'm just going to leave my faith right there. Amen? What came up in my spirit was, again, I'm not belittling what's going on in the world. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> this COVID-19 thing is really, um, it's on the level of the elementary. I mean, faith the size of a grain of mustard seed can move a mountain. This is not this does not take great faith for you to to overcome. Amen. And the fear specifically what I'm talking about is the fear that's trying to go with it. And and again, the, the fear not even necessarily of the sickness of it. That that's one part of it. That's the elementary part of it. There's the there's the there's the second wave of fear that's trying to come, and that's the financial aspect of it, okay? So you'll get it as I'm ministering, and I refer to often the financial piece of prosperity that God desires for his children to operate in, okay? All right, so you ready for this? All right, let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16 again. Hallelujah. We're looking at this. You know that you have the faith of God? Yes. <laughs> you have the God kind of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? Let's look at that. Hold your place in Romans. You don't mind if I just hear from the Lord and then minister as I hear? <laughs> Go to Mark chapter 11. Gentlemen, could you put Mark 11.22 in the Young's literal translation? Hmm. Yep. You see it up there on the screen? He says, And Jesus answering saith to them, Have faith of God. Jesus answered, Have faith of God. Say that with me. Have faith of God. When you have the faith of God, and you do have the faith of God, <laughs> nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Nothing shall be impossible. See, what the enemy tries to make you think is, you know, here, here, here's God. He's got all the faith, you know, he ever could ever want, ever could ever use, and ever could ever need. And, you know, but you, you, you now, you, you struggling thing, you, you know, you just have to try to make your way and, and scratch and claw and fight and, and just try to do everything you possibly can to make it through. You have the faith of God. Glory to God. The faith of God takes the struggle, it takes the toil right out. I said it takes the, the struggle and the toil right out of it. Because I have the faith of God. Amen? Say it again. I have, I have 
the faith of God. Say, I have, I have the God kind of faith. That's the kind of faith that moves mountains. Now, whatever that mountain may be, you have the God kind of faith. You have the faith of God to say unto that mountain. Yes. Amen? Yes. Now, let's go back to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Glory, 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 glory. You know what came up in my spirit? I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's an old song. I pull some old ones out, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. He says here, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To everyone that let me say it like this. To everyone that has the faith of God <laughs> and believes. You have the faith of God and you believe. You're equipped because you have the faith of God. The faith of God is the equipping to believe. You have within you the capacity and the ability to believe because you have the faith of God. And the Word of God produces confidence in that faith of God that's in you. <laughs> Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is the backer of the faith of God that's in you. Yeah, yes. He's standing there. He, he, he's, he's standing within you saying, you have the faith of God. Just exercise the faith of God. When you're in the midst of the fire, when you're in the midst of the furnace, when you're in the midst of the very pressure of the thing, remind yourself there is one who is with you. And he's in the form of the Son of God. That is the Spirit of God that is in you. And that's why you can say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his glorious might. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You needed to hear some faith this morning, didn't you? Yes. For I am not ashamed of the good news. I'm reading New Living about Christ, for it is the power of God at work. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. I said a few weeks ago that faith is not future tense. Faith is now. Yeah. Hebrews 11.1 1 we read says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now listen, the most responsible thing a believer can do is to trust God. Amen? Amen. Go to James chapter 1, verse 2. Say, faith, faith. That, provides that provides stability. stability. Now, what you're going to find out, what we're going to read here and be reminded of, is that faith in the wisdom of God provides stability. Faith in the wisdom of God provides stability. Have you noticed how many opinions of people there are in the world? <laughs> Have you noticed how many, um, how many ways that you can now hear the opinions of people? People probably always had their opinions, but now with today's age and technology, boy, we can hear so many opinions of people, Right? Well, how many of you know that while there are, that while there, as long as there are people, there will be opinions, <laughs> right? It's like what one person said, uh, opinions are like noses, right? Everyone's got one. <laughs> um, while there are a lot of opinions of people, the opinion of God, the wisdom of God is what matters most. 
the wisdom of God is what matters most. I mean, you could just take everybody, all, all opinions of the whole entire world, all, all just group them all together, and all those voices, but the opinion and the voice and the wisdom of God for your life is what matters most. That's why the scriptures tell us, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen? Now listen, there are some good opinions that people can have, right? Why? Because people can hear from God as well, you know? God can use people. I mean, I, you know, I, I have a doctor. I have attorneys that I go to, right? I have a, a, a pastor myself, right? Why? Because I, I hear what they have to say. I listen to them as well. All right, so it's not like, oh, you know, I'm just all on my own over here. You know? But the one who matters most is the opinion of the Lord. Yes. The greatest wisdom that I have access, uh, accessibility to is the wisdom of God for my life. Yes. The most. The, I place the highest priority on the wisdom of God for my life. I seek wise counsel in, in many areas of my life, a lot of areas of my life, but the one who matters most is the wisdom of God for my life. Okay? Praise the Lord. And that's important because you don't have to be an either or. You don't have to be like, you know, well, just forget it. You know, I, I, I'm not going to listen to anybody. No, what, what, that, what? You know what's usually in that? A lot of pride is what's in that. And at times, foolishness and presumption is in that too. But my first place to go should be the wisdom of God. Amen? And I trust and believe God that God uses, you know, my pastor, I know that he does, to minister to my life. I believe that God uses my doctor to minister to my life. I believe that God uses our attorneys to minister to my life. True. Hallelujah. That'll help you. Amen. James chapter 1 verse 2 says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let, have, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Say, wanting nothing. Wanting. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And let him ask in faith. Say that with me. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven and with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Listen to the uh, New Living Translation just for a minute. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete, needing nothing. Say perfect, perfect. Complete, complete, needing nothing. This word perfect has to do with maturing. Mature. Say mature. Mature. There is a great need for Christians to mature. Just generally speaking, there is a great need for maturity to happen in believers' lives. How is that maturity obtained? Well, through the wisdom of God. It's one of the ways that we mature spiritually. You don't have to freak out about things when you have the wisdom of God on it because the wisdom of God will give you the answer. Have you ever uh, not had the answer to something and noticed how you felt as a result of not having the knowledge or the answer to something? And then once you receive that answer, you're like, right? 
How many of you, don't raise your hands, you've acted a little immature about something when you didn't have the answer and didn't know the answer to it? You acted a little bit like a kid. <laughs> you look back and you go, boy, I freaked out all about that for nothing. <laughs> Thinking of some stuff myself <laughs> that I'm not even going to tell you about. How about being complete? Meaning this word, he says, let it grow for your endurance is fully developed. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete. This complete has to do with um, no defects. No defects. Huh. You ever had something that was defected? Didn't work? God says here, he's saying that, that when we allow our, our, the patience to have its perfect and to allow it to develop in us, that we can have a life that doesn't have defect, complete, mature. Um, another word is developed. And he says, another thing that the translator says here is, he says, needing nothing. And I looked that up. This has to do with lacking no good thing. And once again, nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Gosh. He goes on to say, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. And he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person that with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. Say unstable. unstable. This word unstable means unreliable, uncertain about everything he thinks, everything he feels, and everything he decides. Unstable. When a person has the wisdom of God, there is no faith remorse. You ever heard this term? Uh, in, in, in buying and selling, there's these two terms. There's seller's remorse and there's buyer's remorse. Somebody sells something and as soon as they sell it, they go, ah, I wish I wouldn't have sold that. Or they go, ah, probably could have sold a little bit more because it sold so quickly. Seller's remorse. Then there's buyer's remorse. Oh, I got to have it. 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 <laughs> All they can do is think about buying this thing, especially if they test drove it. <laughs> and then they get it, and then buyer's remorse settles in. Whew. Whoa, I have to have the responsibility of paying for this thing now for the next umpteen years, right? And they're thinking about the interest payments and so on and so forth. The wisdom of God, when you have the wisdom of God, you exercise your faith in his wisdom, in his word. There's no faith remorse. You never look back at it and go, man, I wish I wouldn't have believed God for that. He just brought it to pass. There's no remorse in it. See, he said here that a person who has a divided loyalty between God and the world is a person who is unstable. And that, unsta that, 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 that unstable life is one that is unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. Well, I made this decision, but I'm not really sure if I should have made this decision. I mean, I think God told me to do it, but I'm not really sure God told me to do it. No, that's, that's not a picture of what God has for the believer's life. 
I took this job. I really like this job. I don't know if I should have took this job. I think I should have stayed at that job. If you stay at that job, then I really think I should have took that job. I wish I wouldn't have took that job. Why am I still at this job? This is a picture too often of a Christian's life. This is a Christian's life who lacks wisdom and dependency on the wisdom of God. Say, I have the God kind of faith, and I have the wisdom of God. Well, how do you do that? You simply go to him on these decisions. You simply wait and are patient to hear his wisdom. And then once you hear it, you act on it. And when you act on it, you have the peace of God, and you say, I just know this is what I'm supposed to do. I heard from the Lord in here, and I'm going to do it. Because this is what I, I believe in my heart the Lord has spoke to me to do. And you know what? What I found is the more you walk in this, the more settled you get. And the next decision comes along, you seek the Lord, you wait to hear and hear, and you take another step, and you say, you know what? I'm going to do that. And you know what this is a picture of? The just shall live by faith. And what I encourage you to do, I, I, this came out first service. Well, yeah, I'll say it like this. As you say, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. Now, you can begin to exercise your faith in saying that before you know what to do. I said, before you know what to do. Yes. Your head is sitting there trying to figure it out. Your mind is trying to come up with an answer. You, know, you, ever, you, you ever have the kind of thought that's like this? Like, come on! Come on, 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 come on. <laughs> Oftentimes, that's what our mind tries to do. And your spirit goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Just wait just a minute. We're going to get the wisdom of God on this. Before we act, before we react, before we go out and make a decision, we're just going to hear from God on this. Amen. And your mind might not know what to do, and then out of your spirit, out of the faith of God that's in you, you say, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. I have the wisdom of God concerning this. And you might not know any more what to do than you did 10 seconds ago. But you've now activated the spiritual force of faith in your life. And at that moment now, things that are unseen are working on your behalf to bring to you the wisdom that you need. Now, I just gave a real practical example of this just, just recently. We had a situation at our at one of our businesses, and... I didn't know how to solve this problem. And yet it was this ongoing problem. And nobody at our company was doing it or knew how to do it or whatever. And I was tasked with solving this problem. And one person says, do you know how to do that? And in the natural, I didn't know how to do it. I had never done it, and I didn't know how to do it. I've called or asked and had other people do it, but I didn't know what to do. And you know what I said? It just came out of me. I said, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. Amen. And I know they kind of looked at me like, okay. <laughs> and the thought came up again, like, I don't know. I don't know. And then, you know, I didn't, I didn't even, at that point, I didn't even want to do it because I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix this thing. This is not what I'm good at, so to speak. You know, but I'm not going to say that out of my mouth. I don't, I don't, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I just don't talk like that. And so um, a little while went by and I thought, well, you know, I'm going to call somebody that I think they might, they might know how to do this. 
So I called him up, told him the situation, and he said, um, yeah, yeah, I'm not really good at that. I'm like, oh, great. Now there's two dum-dums in a room, right? He says, but I'll come by and look at it. And he came by, and sure enough, he was right. He didn't know what to do either. And I'm thinking, and I remember thinking, this is such a waste of my time. And he says, you know what, but I'm going to call somebody. He goes, this guy, he, he does this all the time. In fact, he has a side business, and that's what he does, and I work with him. He calls him up, and in 30 seconds, he told him, this is the equipment you buy, this is how you set it up, and this is what you do. And I'm sitting there thinking, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. And the only thing that I was prompted to do was call somebody that I know. But in calling them, I thought, real quick, he doesn't know any more than I know because he told me he didn't know any more than I know. But I'm not backing off of my statement that says, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. See, a lot of people look at the steps and the process and they think they're failing at it because they don't see the immediate result. And what I'm saying is just stay in faith. Just leave the switch on. That's all I had to do was leave the switch on. That's all I had to do was leave the faith switch on. I could have said, this guy doesn't know any more than me. This isn't working. I don't know what to do. Throw my hands up the air. I could stress about it a little bit if I wanted. And I didn't. Thank God I didn't. So then we had the product that we needed to buy. It was told to us, this is what you need to buy. Well, that's easy enough. Start do it looking online. I look it up. And I found like, I looked on Amazon. I looked on this. I looked on that. These places. Sure. I go to order it. Delivery date, undetermined. <laughs> one, one delivery date was, I think, 12 months out projected. I finally found one device on a website. No, they had two, two devices on, a, on a, a website. I go, great. I added to my cart, going to buy it. It was, you know, some company. And it put your credit card information in. So I walk out to my truck, grab my wallet, flip it open, read, type the credit card thing in, and items sold out. Two items sold out from the time I walked to my car out. I'm like, are you kidding me? And we needed this piece of technology for what we were doing. I thought, I've got the wisdom of God concerning this. The Lord had me go to a website. I'd never been on this website before. It's electronic device we needed, and I found it. I think it was on Bed, Bath, and Beyond. <laughs> and they had one in stock, and I ordered it, and we got it in two days. It was exactly what we needed. And I remember thinking, I began going, I've got the wisdom of God on this. See, once you put your faith out there, and your trust in him. You can either trust in the world, you can either trust in your own ability, but you can't have divided loyalty. A d person who has divided loyalty is unstable in all their ways. And it said that that instability, it says that they are uncertain. Listen to this now. If you're writing notes, write this down. This, un this unstable means they will be uncertain about everything they think they feel, and they decide. Now, if you think about the enemy, oh, sure, you're a Christian. Oh, Ralph, yeah, you're a Christian, you're a Christian. But if Ralph, being a believer, being a Christian, loves God going to heaven when he dies, but all the while he's on this earth, he's unstable in everything he thinks, everything he feels, and everything he decides. What kind of life is that? Even though he's a believer. He's a Christian, he loves God. And the enemy would love for us to be unstable in what we think, in what we feel, and in our decision making. 
we don't have to live that way because we have the faith of God and we have access to his godly wisdom to know and to make decisions. This is some of the stability that the world needs to see in the church. And when Jeff and Jake said to that lady who worked for them in their accounting department, this, this lady that had this kind of motherly you know, uh, uh, presence about her, when they talk, said what they said, and then they leave town, right? They leave town when their company is in a deficit to go to some preaching meetings and teaching meetings, right? But when you have the wisdom of God, and you say, no, no, no. You know, the best thing I can do for my company is actually go and hear from God. Yeah. And they reacted in faith. And, and my wife and I have said this because we've been a part of the Believers Convention for, we've gone, I think, for over 20 years. And it's amazing how many times, you know, we, you plan your, your, your trip and you book your flights and your cars and your hotels. And it was like year after year, how many times we experienced difficulties in our own businesses. It was like the storm would arise right before we'd go to leave. I, I re literally remember leaving and flying and going to those meetings, sitting on the airplane going, what am I doing? I remember thinking that. I remember thinking, how fast can I get a flight back to Tampa? I was like, as soon as I land, I'm thinking, I'm at the airport already. Why don't I just see if I can get a flight back to town? Isn't that stupid, though? It, that, I, I can tell on myself, that's stupid, all right? I'll just tell you. You don't have to say I'm stupid. I'll say I'm stupid, all right? That's stupid, but that is a person. That type of thinking is a person who is undecided and unstable about everything they think, everything they feel, and everything they decide. And I had to go back to the wisdom of God, and say, the most responsible thing I can do is just trust the Lord in this. I remember thinking, it's called a believer's convention, and I'm just trying to believe to get there and stay there for a few days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank God for the wisdom of God that we have total and full, complete access to. That he pours it out liberally. He upbraids it not. Let's say it again. I have, I have the wisdom of God, wisdom of God concerning, this. concerning this. Now, whatever that is, right? Could be your finances, could be relationship, every any any area of your life, you have the wisdom of God concerning it. You got time for a little bit more? I'm just taking my time through this. I'll just as the Lord leads me. Go with me over to Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Praise hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou out men, that they may search out the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel which I give unto the children of Israel. Now, it's interesting because Canaan land was not only a demonstration of God's provision for Israel, but Canaan land was also provided stability for their lives. And God, faith in God, provides stability for our life. Let me say that again. Faith in God provides stability for our life. Let me say that a third time. Faith in God provides stability for our life. God wants his children living stable. Not worried, not stressed out, not wondering about tomorrow, right? Don't worry about tomorrow. He said, tomorrow has cares of itself. Seek first my kingdom. I'm going to say it like this, just my words. Seek first my stable kingdom. Yeah. 
my kingdom stable. His throne is forever. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, assume that you're going into the Canaan land. I want you to assume that. All right? Not wandering around, not uncertain. Assume you're going in. Just have an assumption, I'm going into that land. Let me say it like this. Assume you're going to live that life. That life that has provision for every, uh, all my needs, that's the kind of life I'm going to live. Amen? Amen? And faith in God is, is what will provide you that, that, that provision, that land. This land of Canaan land, this land, if you think about it, this land provided, had revealed that there was plenty of food for them, right? It was a land that flowed with milk and honey, right? This land, you could look at it and say it provided shelter for it. We know that, they said the, that the walls around it, it was walled and they were great. This land uh, had resources. You could say with this land, it provided rest for them. Finally, a land that was their own, you could say it provided uh, ownership. This was their land. I think it's safe to say that this land was representing God's very best for their life while they lived on this planet. Amen? And you can look at this land one of two ways we know. You can look at this land and go, oh my, oh my, yes, look at the walls, look at the people, the walls are great, <laughs> the people are stronger than we are, everything is just too big for us, God. Some people, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Oh, that was great. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it's just too big, God. It's just too big. Or you could look at it from the perspective of this. This, this land, this land is just, it's just a demonstration of God's love and provision for my life. Thank you, Lord, that no matter what my need was, no matter what turns and corks happened in my life, no matter what circumstances came at me, you always provided. You always had provision available for my life. Praise God. And God, you're a good God. And God, you're an abundant God. And this is a land that flowed with milk and honey. And guess what? I'm assuming that you, you provided this land because you want me to live in this land. You provided this lifestyle because you wanted me to live in this lifestyle. Amen. The, the, when Robin Leach talks, he's talking about my lifestyle. Amen? I don't even think he's alive anymore, and some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> I'm talking about the lifestyles of the rich and the famous. Because God said, I'll bless you, and I'll make your name great. Amen? I mean, this is, what, this is just the kind of life God wants us to live and is provided for us to live. Amen? Now, you can look at it and go, well, there's no way I could live like that. I mean, I couldn't even eat those grapes. They're so big, I can't even fit them in my mouth. <laughs> Some people will find excuse and problems with everything. And there are people, yes, there are people, hopefully you're not in the room, but you could be, that have a problem with God's abundant provision. But God is who has, has, has made provision. Listen, I, I am planning on talking so much about this, but I, I'm convinced that he didn't, the provision that's in the earth isn't for the heathen. It's for the godly. And when the godly are walking in abundance of provision, I think it's just a testimony to how good God is to and for our life. And I'm not just talking about material things. Let's talk about the peace of God. Joy. When you have peace of God in your life and there's someone who's struggling, oh, let me say it like this. Have you ever been struggling? And then you see someone else who's struggling and they start telling you about their struggle. You know what you're tempted to do? Tell them about your struggle. But when you see someone who's struggling 
and you're just so filled with the peace of God in your life. You can just go right over there and say, come on, come on, boy. Yep, I know. I know you're hurting. I know you're struggling. I know you got this going on. And you can just minister God's peace to him. Isn't this what Jesus did in the midst of that great storm? Here he is, a picture of rest, asleep on the pillow. And those who weren't peaceful, his own disciples, woke him up. And what does he do? He rebukes the wind. Right? I said he rebuked the wind. Is that right? Now what the word says? He didn't say, God, I know you sent this storm to teach us something. He didn't say, God, I know you sent this storm, and we're going to endure this storm as a good soldier. (laughs) And we're going to bail the water as you give us strength to bail the water. It's not what he said. It's not what he did. No, he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, peace, be still. And there was a great calm. To me, that's a picture of stability. It's a picture of the wisdom of God being demonstrated through spiritual authority. When you have the wisdom of God, you can operate in spiritual authority. You notice you looked at Jesus and he would be in the synagogue teaching and he said, who is this? A man, he teaches with such authority. Well, here he was, a young man in his 30 years of age, drawing upon the wisdom of God. And as the wisdom of God was flowing through him, he was just leaving the faith switch on. And the faith switch being left on, people were seeing the demonstration of the power of God flowing through his life. That's a picture of how God wants our life to be. I don't care what you're faced with. I don't care what you're dealing with. Not to be insensitive about it, I'm telling you, just leave the faith switch on. Just leave the faith switch on. Don't, don't, don't go and quickly turn it off and say it's not working. The moment you do that, you just turn it off. Just flip it right back. Say, Lord, no, no, you know what? You know what? I, you know, I rep- you know, got, yep, yep. You know what? I have the wisdom of God concerning this. I have the wisdom of God concerning this. And your mind might be doing this, knocking at the door, looking for an answer. And you just respond again, oh, oh, thank you, Lord. I have the wisdom of God concerning this. I have the wisdom of God concerning this. I have the wisdom of God concerning this. And then, uh, to me, you can say it, and and, and it kind of grows on the inside of you. And next thing you know, you start getting excited. And when you're excited, it's typically an indication that you're in faith. And you go, guess what? I got the wisdom of God concerning. Praise God, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. And your mind might be just as as, as a zero like it was the first time you said it, but it just starts building in your spirit. (laughs) Glory to God, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. I have the, glory to God, I have the wisdom of God concerning this. Faith will grow in your heart. We're not going to go into it today. I was going, it's in my notes to go into, but. You know what that's called? Abra- God described Abraham as one that ha- not being weak in faith, but strong. Strong in faith. You know how you, how you, you grow strong in faith? Just leave the faith switch on. Just keep the confession, I have the wisdom of God concerning. I have the wisdom of God concerning this. I have the wisdom of God. I mean, God has helped me, even in my own physical body, my own physical body, listen to me now, my own physical body. I've had things I've dealt with physically in my life. And I'd gone to the doctors, I'd gone to the professionals, and and I hadn't gotten any better. More than once I've had this. And I go, I've got the wisdom of God concerning this. I've got the wisdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to me what I need to know. Things I need to change. If I need to change, I'll say that, Lord, if I need to change something, reveal to my heart what I need to change. Hallelujah. Did you get something out of this? Stand your feet, please. Hallelujah. Now I want you to, let's just say it again. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom of God 
concerning this. Concerning this. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for making your wisdom so accessible, so available for our life. Lord, in areas of our life where we have been tempted to struggle and toil and fret, we just lay it all and give it to you. And we just thank you that your wisdom is just flowing in and through our life, revealing to us what it is we need to do and even what it is that we don't need to do. And in all of our getting, we get understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, that is the beginning of this, this message here on simple faith and how faith provides stability for our life. Great stability for our life. Amen? Praise God. Well, if you're here and you're not born again, if you're not, never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we always want to give people that opportunity. Or if you're watching online, please contact our ministry and reach out to us and let us connect with you and pray with you and get some free material into your life to, to help you in your Christian walk in life. Um, if you'd like prayer in any area of your life, I'll be up here to pray with you. Remember that you are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, blessed going in and blessed going out, and everything you set your hand to. You're the lender, not the borrower. You're good looking. You're dismissed. I worship you.